boys and girls, students of Buddhist Sunday school and Dharma classes, parents, grandparents, teachers of Buddhist Sunday school and Dharma classes. Good morning. May you all be well, happy and peaceful. We're going to have a presentation on Aesop's stories. The title is Two Aesop's Stories with Morals. You have heard many Aesop's fables that I have presented. And these Aesop's fables are very popular and well known. And they teach very good moral lessons or life lessons that will help us to live our lives more happily, peacefully, and wisely. Now, the presentation has the text in English and Malay, but the narration is in English. So, we will, as usual, launch the PowerPoints for the two Aesop's stories. Before that, let us uh, check the setup. Okay. Uh, so the setup is all right. So now let us launch the PowerPoint. Uh, you see the cover slide? Two Aesop's stories with morals or in Bahasa Malaysia or Malay, we say Dua Kisah Aesop dengan Moral. Now, you can see four pictures here that pertain to the two Aesop's stories. Right? And you know in uh, most of the Aesop's fables or stories, you have the animals as the main characters. And the animals in these fables could talk, right? They can talk. So it's just a story, but the morals are very good. Now, in these two stories, you have animals like the snake, you can see, right? The snake. And then you have also the goose, right? Uh, answer. Uh, you can see the goose, you know what it is. And then you have the eagle. Ah, the eagle. This is the goose, the eagle, the snake. Ah, there's an eagle here also. Uh, it's bigger than the hen or the duck, lah, uh, the goose. And of course, the eagle is a very majestic, big bird. Uh. Some of you have been to Langkawi and uh, you have seen actually uh, uh, the eagles are flying and they're swooping down to the surface of the waters to catch the fish for their food. Now, so that is this uh, eagle. Now, let us go on to the start of the first story. But before that, let me take off this video. Uh, uh, that is the cover slide for the first Aesop story. And the first of the two Aesop stories is titled The Serpent and the Eagle. Ula dengan helang. Now, serpent, of course, is the snake. Uh, the snake. And this serpent, you know, can be quite dangerous. You know, uh, These snakes, uh, uh, some of them are poisonous. So if they bite you, then you can actually die if you don't get treatment quick enough. Uh, like cobras, you know, they're poisonous. And then you have another type of big snake like the python uh, that can even swallow a goat, right? a big animal. And they can, you know, call around the animal or even the, uh, the human being, you know, call around and squeeze you until uh, you die, you cannot breathe. Uh, then they swallow you. And pythons uh, can be very, very huge, as you know. So that is this serpent and then of course here is the eagle or uh, the eagle uh, if i were wondering why is the serpent uh, coiling his uh, body around the eagle uh, let us go to the story 
Now we go to slide number three. That's the start of the story. Now, let me read and explain the story to you. A serpent had succeeded in surprising an eagle and had wrapped himself around the eagle's neck. So there was once uh, this serpent you know, who managed to attack the eagle. You know. Of course, the eagle uh, high in the sky uh, could not be attacked by the snake. Uh. But sometimes, you know, the eagle would you know, land on the ground, you know, maybe in search of some food. And the serpent, you know, one stage, uh, he attacked the eagle. You know. And then, you know, what did, he, what, did he, what did he do? He wrapped himself around the eagle's neck, you know, or something like, like this. Uh. The pictures uh, help you to visualize, uh, uh, picture the thing. Uh. So, of course, you see, so once the snake... Uh, uh, calls round the body, or in this case here, the neck, uh, the eagle would have difficulty in movement already. Uh, it could not, very difficult already, you know. So, but the, the eagle, of course, the eagle also could attack, you know, because it has a very sharp beak, you know, like you can see, very sharp. It could actually bite, you know, right? But because the neck uh, was uh, squeezed, uh, uh, by the snake, uh, so he could not reach the serpent. Uh. It was very difficult for the eagle to bite the serpent with the beak, uh, the beak, uh, the mouth area, uh, right? Or using the claws, uh, you know, the, you know, the eagle uh, the, has the claws, though, and you can see an uh, eagle swooping down onto the surface, uses his claw, he can actually just grab onto the fish uh, or even uh, you know, any uh, small creature on the land, uh, he could uh, swoop down and grab. And that was when the snake attacked. Uh, uh. So, but he could still fly, uh, the wing is good, he still could flap the wing. Uh. So he, he quickly flew up, uh, right? Uh, here you could see the eagle, Flying up into the sky, saw uh, flying up. Uh. So he was trying to shake off the enemy, uh, to shake off the, the snake. But it was not easy. The snake uh, held on to the body, you know, call it. So the serpent, uh, it tightened, uh, uh, it tightened uh, the squeeze uh, on the neck uh, and part of the body, perhaps, uh, of the eagle. So the eagle was weak already, la, became weak already. So what happened? He could not fly properly. So he, he began to sing. He sing back onto the earth already. He couldn't uh, fly. He didn't die yet. He was gasping for breath, you know. Imagine somebody squeezing your neck. Uh. You can actually die, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> so uh, the neck was being squeezed. He was gasping for breath. So now you'll be wondering, did the eagle die? Right? Did the eagle die? So let us look at the next slide, which is slide number four. So, ah, so now you picture the situation, the eagle, right? With the snake still around it, now on the ground already, on the ground. So it so happened that in that area, the countryside, there was this farmer, so he saw this thing. He saw that the eagle uh, was being uh, squeezed by the snake and he could die, you know. So he felt that it was an unequal fight, you know, that the animal, I mean, the eagle could not fight, uh, quite helpless uh, with the snake uh, coiled around it, isn't it? So he really pitied the noble eagle, you know? uh, as you could read. Uh, Farmer happened to see the unequal combat. Out of pity for the noble eagle, he rushed up. He rushed up. You know. And then he probably had, you know, some of the gardening tools or the farming tools. Uh, uh, like one of it is the hoe. Uh, uh. So he used this, right? And, and then he sort of uh, hit at the serpent, uh, wanting to let the serpent release the eagle uh, to free the eagle. Uh, you could see here. 
uh, out of pity for the noble eagle, the farmer rushed up and soon had loosened the coiling serpentary and freed the eagle. Uh, so the eagle now uh, did not die. He was freed by the farmer. So it means that the farmer actually saved the life of the eagle. Uh, so perhaps in the countryside, this is just a picture showing some other people who were there to see what happened. Now let us go on to slide number five. Now the serpent was furious, was very, very angry with the farmer for saving the eagle. You no, know, he used his hole to poke at the Snake, uh, it was painful, so he had to release her. Uh. But then the farmer was still having the hole, right? Uh, so he wanted to attack the farmer, but the farmer was very mindful, uh, uh, very difficult to bite. Uh. <laughs> uh, but instead, you know, what happened uh, was uh, this snake, uh, he struck at the drinking horn. You know? Now, you see, uh, those days, uh, now you might have still most cases like this, uh, where people, you know, in the rural areas, the farmers, and long time ago, you know, they would wear this drinking horn, you know, a horn. Uh, I think you know a horn. Uh, you can sound the horn just like a musical instrument, like a like a trumpet. Uh, could be uh. So there's a, a horn. Uh, you can see the picture I put here. Uh. So they use this horn also to get water, you know, to store water, and then uh, wear the horn around the waist, uh, uh, tight there. Lah. So, the, you know, what the snake did was this, you know, right? It somehow or other, like, did not explain how he did it, but uh, the snake, uh, he went near into the drinking horn. Uh, probably he was, you know, uh, calling a bit already, lah, uh, Round the farmer's body, uh. but somehow or other, uh, he let go his poison, you know, into the drinking horn that was hanging uh, at the farmer's belt uh, around the waist area. You know. So he put inside the poison, you know, of his fangs, you know. ah, the fangs, you know, the two sharp fangs. Uh. Or the fence uh, open his mouth and then uh, you know he could release uh, the poisonous thing into the horn. He wanted to take revenge. Uh. He knew that the farmer I mean, I did not realize it, uh, did not realize he was trying to get rid of the, the snake. Uh, right? Then after that, the snake left already, left the, the body of the farmer because he, the farmer was alert. Uh, if we were to buy him the the farmer, uh, if the snake were to bite him, the farmer would probably, you know, kill him. You know, right? So, now the horn tied at the farmer's belt contains some poison of the snake. Uh, and the farmer was not aware of it. He was so fast, everything. So, what happened? Did the farmer die? Because the farmer would soon fill the horn with water and drink it, and then once he uh, drank it, he will be poisoned uh, because of the poisonous substance uh, uh, from the snake. You see, so now what happened next? Now, so let us move on to slide number six. Ah, this slide is next. So the farmer, since the snake already uh, went off. So what did the farmer do now? So maybe he, well, after some time, he decided to go back already, go back to his home already. Probably when he saw the thing, he was on his way home also. Lah. He had finished his work, perhaps, or whatever. So the farmer, uh, with the horn, uh, you could see here the horn. Uh, this is just a picture. Huh? So then when he was walking home, he felt thirsty. On the way, he became thirsty. So he stopped by a spring, you know. A spring, you know, in the spring 
you have water. Uh, here you have an example uh, of a spring, uh, very clear water. Uh, I could actually drink from the spring water. So he took out his horn. Uh, you can see, he took out the horn. From, and then he filled the horn with the water from the spring. So he was actually about to drink already. But something happened. So if the farmer had taken the water uh, drinking from the horn, he would die. Because the spring water would mix with the poison uh, left behind by the snake, who was very angry with him uh, for saving the eagle. So the farmer did not know. So what happened? Uh, suddenly, there was a rush of great wings. You know. There were the sounds of the flapping wings. You know. uh, this actually could give you an idea. Actually, it was the eagle. Uh, the eagle was still around, you know, right? The farmer had saved the eagle and he flew up already. He regained his strength already. But he did not leave the area yet. He observed what happened to the farmer. He observed from the top. Now the snake could not get him uh, because the eagle was flying not that high up. So when he saw what happened and that the farmer was about to drink from the horn containing the spring water and the poison, he swooped down. Uh, he flew very fast down and there was the sound of flapping wings. Uh, there was a sudden rush of great wings. So what happened next now? Uh? So let us move to slide number seven. So, sweeping down, right? Very fast, you know, the, uh, uh, the eagle uh, could land down. That is only just uh, to show, give you an idea you know, what actually happened. Uh, so you could imagine, of course, the farmer could not be so young, uh, right? So the farmer had taken the water from the spring with the horn and there was the water mixed with the poison in the horn and he was about to drink it. And the eagle swept down very fast with the wings flapping, you know. And immediately the eagle seized the poison horn from out his savior's hands. As I told you, the eagle, right, has very, very strong claws that can grasp onto something, you know, right? Uh, very, very powerful claws. Uh. So uh, the eyes of the eagle is very sharp. Uh, so it was very, very accurate. He went straight to the horn. And then with the feet or the claws, he grabs onto the horn, uh, he grabs onto the horn and snatched the horn away. Because he was afraid that the farmer would drink and die. And then flew away with it. Uh, he grabs, uh, just as he would grab his uh, prey, la, a fish la, or maybe a small uh, rat la, or a small frog la, uh, uh, for food, la, just like that. So he was carrying that poison horn, had the claws, and the eagle flew away. Uh, uh, eagles sometimes will live in the mountain areas. Uh. So he flew away with it and he hid it. Uh. He went to hide it at a place that nobody could find. Otherwise, uh, if somebody uh, were to uh, find it, uh, if there's still some water there and uh, people you know uh, could die uh, drinking the water, um, but in time to come across the water will evaporate away. So he just left it at a place where it could never be found. So you can see now the eagle saved the life of the farmer. Huh? Oh, very fantastic, isn't it? So you see, there's this very simple story, but you have very, very good moral lessons that you can learn actually. Right? You can learn the important lessons. So before we go on to the Second Aesop's Fable, we will have to learn the important moral lesson and also maybe to discuss some Dharma teachings. Uh, 
So let us now go on to slide number eight now. Uh, now, in slide number eight, we have the moral lessons, or you can say the Dharma messages. Uh, moral of the story, uh, Dharma teachings. Uh, an act of kindness is repaid. Now, you see, you know very well, right, that uh, it's very, very important that we do acts of kindness. We have kind thoughts and then we have kind speech. Right? We speak kind words that make people happy. The people who are suffering, when they receive kind words from you, you console them, you advise them, kind words, uh, then they feel very, very happy. And you have done a positive action or you have spoken kind words and this has good karma. So this good karma, you find when it ripens, you get the good results. And of course, the important, most important is doing an act of kindness. You see somebody, you know, in great difficulties, you save that person, or you render help, you donate to some beggars, because of kindness and metta, loving kindness, you decide to give the poor, poor, so hungry, without any money, you decide to help. And that is an act of kindness. So this act of kindness has good karma. And the karma can ripen, maybe a little part in the life, next life or so. But in this case, the story, you find that the, the good karma ripens uh, almost uh, immediately, very fast, isn't it? Uh, maybe less than... Uh, 15 minutes only, huh? you know, the events that took place. So, now, we will examine the story. You can see that actually the farmer saved the eagle. Saved the lives of the eagle. Saved the life of the eagle out of kindness. He took pity on the eagle. He had compassion. He had kindness. So, he removed the snake, huh? That was coiling around the eagle. So in this way, the eagle did not die. So the farmer had done a kind, good act. And when his life was in danger, you know, the drinking from the horn of poison water, huh? immediately the eagle came to save him. Uh, so you see, uh, uh, it's uh, immediate and you know, uh, very, very fast. Uh. So an act of kindness is repaid. Uh. Uh, repaid. So actually, there is this thing that what goes around comes around. Uh, you do something that is good, kind, uh, you get the rewards. Uh. And sometimes, you know, very, very fast. Good begets good. On the other hand, bad begets bad. Now you see, there was this case, actual case, you know, Two friends went to the jungle to hunt. You know? They like to hunt these animals. It's not a good thing to do. You must not hunt. Because uh, you kill, let's say, an animal. Imagine uh, the animal, maybe wild boar la, or monkey la, or deer. Uh, would have is maybe it's you know, around, you know, uh, uh, the, the kids, la, uh, the children, I can say, uh, uh, the baby monkey or the baby deer. So imagine if the mother would be would be hunted and killed, uh, how would the, the baby deer or baby monkeys or baby wild boar and all this feel? It would be terrible, isn't it? Apart from a uh, killing, uh, which is a terrible thing, and you cause suffering to the others. Uh, so there was this case. So two men went hunting. So, you know, they would kill, uh, uh, you know, wild birds or so, uh, all sorts of uh, animals, uh, then, uh, not long later, one man uh, used a gun and shot his friend because he thought that he was a wild boar or deer, you know. Ah, so he killed the friend. Ah, so you could see that here, of course, the friend had also killed the other animals. So immediately, uh, uh, the bad result came already that he was killed. It was an actual case from what I understand. You know? So now you realize this, you must always do good. And good will come to you. Huh? If you do good, 
good will come to you. Buat kebaikan dan kebaikan datang kepada anda. Oh, buat baik. So, this is a very important lesson that you have to learn from this story of the serpent and the eagle. To always do good, kind actions. In fact, the Buddha taught this. If you were to summarize uh, in just one line, what the Buddha taught in 45 years, uh, it could be just this. Do good, avoid evil, and purify the mind. That's all. To always do good and to avoid all those bad actions. Uh, starting from the mind, not to have bad thoughts, not to have bad speech, and not to have bad actions, of course. So you must do good to have good thoughts, to speak good words, kind words that can benefit other people. Uh, you feel happy also. You are having speech of kindness and actions of kindness. You do something good to help others. Uh, so that is this message. And you can see this illustrated in Aesop's fable, the serpent and the eagle. Now let us go on to slide number nine, which would start the second of the two Aesop's stories. Uh, you have heard the first one. So now let us move to the second one, which is, which is a very simple Aesop's fable that has been used in various versions uh, in different cultures also, right? Ah, it doesn't matter if you have heard a story similar to what we are going to do, but you can reflect on the Dharma teaching later on. So now let us go on to slide number nine already. Now slide number nine is titled The Goose and the Golden Egg. Of course, uh, as of fables are not actual true stories, they are fables. Just as you read Cinderella, Snow White, San Kan Chil stories, so many of the fairy tales also you have read. They are just stories. But the important thing is the moral lessons. Uh, the important thing, the Dharma messages. Uh. Uh, so it's not important. Yeah, yeah, this is not true. Uh. Uh, we learn a story like Bawang Puteh, Bawang Mera. Of course, we know it's not true. But we learn so many important things. Uh, must be kind, must not torture other people, and so on, isn't it? Ah, that is the important thing. So this story, of course, you see, concerns a goose. Now, this goose, you can see, uh, uh, it can actually fly also. And some people rear the goose, uh, the Plural is geese, la, and you can lay eggs, you know, the eggs are bigger, you know, compared to the duck eggs or the chicken eggs or hen eggs. La. And these geese uh, get slaughtered and then uh, roast, uh, roasted uh, on occasions, uh, festival, Christmas or whatever. Uh, uh, so you can roast the goose. Uh, uh. So there was this goose reared by uh, uh, maybe a farmer. So let us now move on to the story going to slide number 10. There was once a rural man. A rural man will be a person right, that lived in the countryside, the rural area. He could be a farmer or he could be you know, just doing you know, simple things like planting some fruit trees you know, to collect the fruits and then to sell in the market. So anyway, he was not in the town area. He was in the countryside. So there was this rural man you could see. And he possessed the most wonderful goose you can imagine. The story did not tell how he managed to get the wonderful goose. Perhaps he had bought the young gooseling. That means the young goose when the goose was like a, a baby like that when it was very, very young and then decided to uh, bring a uh, real area uh, to feed it and then when it grew up into a certain stage uh, then you could lay eggs uh, just as you have uh, baby chicks uh, uh, hatch out from the eggs uh, 
Then the chicks are taken care of by the owners uh, to be fed with the food. Then the time will come where the chicks become uh, big hands already. The mother hands could lay the eggs. Uh, so similarly like this. So he had this wonderful goose. Uh. Wow. You can imagine, you know, every day when the man visited the nest, uh, probably he had an area in his house, right? Outside the house, uh, where he, you know, uh, put in some hay, uh, the dry grass, uh, and he kept the goose there. He fed the goose. So every day he would visit. Uh, uh. So when he started to lay it, something very, very magical happened. Something very strange. Every day, you know, since the time that the goose started to lay eggs, when the man, the rural man, visited the nest area, I can say the home of the goose, la, uh, outside the house of the man, uh, he said, wow, the goose uh, had laid uh, beautiful, glittering, glittering will be like shining, you know, uh, rays coming out, because it was not an ordinary egg, you know, ordinary egg, uh, you break the shell so easily, uh, and then uh, you can actually uh, fry the eggs or, you know, eat the eggs after boiling it or whatever. Lah. But this one was a golden egg, you know. And you imagine gold, one of the most precious metals, more precious and expensive than silver. Of course, uh, you have diamond, uh, even more expensive. But this gold uh, is very, very expensive, isn't it? Wow, this man was very happy. Wow. So, uh, over a few days, uh, he could collect a number of golden eggs. And, of course, uh, he could go to the market area or the town area and to sell the gold, to sell the golden eggs and get a lot of money. And I had uh, given a similar story about the greedy woman. Uh, uh, it was a Malay setting. Uh, uh, uh. So, similar idea. But there's a variation, uh, there's a difference. Uh. So, what happened? Because the man had collected some eggs already. But then, you know, man uh, is filled with mental defilements. Defilements means the bad things uh, inside your mind, you know, like anger, la, greed, la, and then uh, selfishness, la, right? Thoughts of revenge, la, cruelty, la. all these things are uh, very easily surface out from our mind if you are not careful. That's why today you have so many problems arising out of people's mental departments. People who are so very covetous and greedy, cheating other people, con men, uh, scamming. Uh, you know about all these things. Uh, terrible, isn't it? Because of this mental department of greed. And also there are people who get angry very easily. You know? The anger trait uh, is very, very strong. And then it, when such people uh, easily uh, could bully other people, uh, torture other people, and kill other people also. And then also there are some uh, with the strong feelings of pride and ego, you know. Uh, always uh, want to show off and so on. Uh. If somebody says something uh, not so good against the blood, the blood because of his ego, he can cause pain, uh, wall up the fella, bully the fella, torture the fella, or he could even kill because he felt that his ego was affected. So this one just shows that the man was very happy already uh, because he got the golden egg. Now let us go on to slide number 11. Uh, number 11, uh, let's see what happens. Ah, just now, as I said, a week passed already. So he had collected uh, seven eggs. Uh, usually, uh, uh, the goose uh, will lay maybe uh, one egg a day at most. Uh, usually. Uh. So after a week, the rural man took the eggs to the market to sell. Uh. Well, I got his gold, you know. Uh, as you can see the pictures uh, here. Uh. Here, of course, we are showing two eggs. Uh. Probably, uh, uh, he did not go every day. To, uh, after a lapse of two days, then he went, oh, he could not see two eggs already. Uh. Anyway, after a week, he had collected a number of eggs already. Right. But then, uh, greed set in already. 
Uh, the man became very greedy. It's not long. Uh, just after one week, he grew impatient. What man? Uh, every day only one egg. Uh. So he was impatient. This stupid goose, uh, she could only give me one egg a day. Uh, one single golden egg a day. Uh. So uh, I, I cannot get rich fast enough. Uh, in order to collect 30 eggs, uh, I have to wait one month. Uh. Ah, you know, that type of uh, greedy thoughts coming, you know. Uh, so, you know, he scolded the, uh, 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 scolded the goose, uh, right? The goose, uh, what to do? That's the nature of the goose. Uh, the other story I had done many, uh, some years ago already, uh, about the greedy woman. Uh, <laughs> uh, the greedy, greedy woman, the case was different. Uh, after you compare, uh, you see. Uh, so this man, so he... He got that stupid thought, you know. Once you have greed setting in, uh, you can uh, do very, very stupid, foolish things, you know. That can hurt other people and eventually will hurt you because you do something wrong. So, what did he decide to do? Huh? Greed set, he, set in the mind already and he was impatient. He said, I must get rich faster, lah. Uh, one egg a day, uh, are you very, very slow. So let's go on to slide number 12. Uh, slide number 12. Then one day, after he had finished counting his money, I, I mean, now he has sold a number of eggs already, isn't it? Uh, maybe you know, after seven eggs or what. Uh, then he would go to the marketplace or the town area and then he got the money. So, just like a, a miser, he would not do any charity one or dana all this. No, he would hold the money. Lah. So, he got, he counted. He said, actually, I should get the money more faster. No, I can become a millionaire very fast. Then, this stupid idea came to him. No. He said, huh? The eggs laid out from the goose. Huh? So inside the body of the goose, there must be many, many golden eggs there, isn't it? So we got this terrible, cruel idea born out of greed. And you can see the picture here. He was thinking of doing that horrible thing already. The idea came to him that he could get all the golden eggs at once. Uh, at once. Uh. No need to wait one day after another. So, what did he do now? Uh, you see uh, how greed uh, can lead a person to do horrible, unwholesome actions. So, all things start from the mind. So, now in this slide 13, uh, let us look and try to understand important teachings. So, what did he think of? His plan was to kill the goose, you know, and cut it open. Because he got this stupid idea that if he were to cut, uh, kill the geese, uh, you know, cut the neck first, then after that, uh, slice open the body, he would see, he would find so many golden eggs there. Lah. That must be his stupid thinking because of greed, you know. Right, he never thought logically. Uh, of course, it will take time uh, for the egg uh, to be formed uh, one after another. You cut the, uh, the, the chicken mother hen, uh, you would think that you can find uh, 20 eggs uh, uh, waiting to be uh, laid down one at a time. It's stupid, isn't it? It will take time uh, for the eggs to form. The egg, uh, the chickens must be fed, and then now uh, one egg. Uh, uh, gradually will be formed after another and then he will lay out. That's nature. So he's stupid thing because of the he's stupid thinking because of the greed, you know. He couldn't think clearly, logically already. So he decided to do that thing. Uh, you could see this uh, cartoon picture, uh, right? He caught hold of the poor geese, uh, a goose, uh, and then used the knife, cut the neck first, uh, kill it already. Then he sliced open the uh, the body of the goose, he did not find any single golden egg. 
The last eight had been laid out already. Right? That means the day he had laid out the egg already, the last one. So it would take uh, time to form again. So no more golden egg coming out. The man's precious goods was stayed. So he regretted and he cried and cried. You know? <laughs> cry and cry. It was too late already. So the goose had died already. Because of the greed of a single person. And that was this rural man. So he suffered. And you see, he would not get any more. And not only that, he had done something bad, isn't it? So you follow the law of karma, do bad and bad comes to you. You kill, isn't it? In this case, the man kills. So there will be a result. Next, I mean, in a little part of the life, soon, some will, you know, become very, very sick because he caused suffering to others. Or some will have short lives. If it doesn't happen this life, next, rebirth. Of course, this is a story, but in actual case of the Dhamma teaching, some people have very short lives. Right? Some have longer lives. Why? Even in the same family, different members have different lifespan. Isn't it? And according to Buddha's teaching in the scriptures, this is correlated uh, with other karma. That in previous lives, we had you know, often kill and kill and kill. Then the lives would tend to be short. See? So, you see, it's a terrible thing. Now, in the other story that we had about the greedy woman, it was different in the sense that this animal, I think the name was Fatima, if I remember. Uh, so, she, she bought the, the chicken, uh, or maybe she some other got, all the, got hold of the chicken, uh, could have bought it from the market, or could have uh, reared up after, you know, uh, the eggs uh, were hatched, uh, and then this special one became a... Uh, hen uh, that could lay golden eggs. Uh. It's not the goose, it was a hen. So like that, uh, every day she would collect and go to the market to sell. But then she was not patient, you know. She was saying, what? i laying one egg one day only. Because maybe she did not eat enough. So she you know, had this stupid idea. She said, I will let the, the hen uh, eat more so that maybe one day, uh, three or four eggs she could lay. So, but the, uh, the hen uh, could not lay, uh, eat so much, you know. But she, oh, ah, because of the greed, ah, forced the mother hen ah, to eat more. You know, got hold of it, opened the mouth and forced the food in. Ah, and then one day, you know, I mean not one day, ah, when the, she did that, ah, the food got choked at the neck of the mother hen, of the chicken. And the mother hen died. So the story was a bit different at the end. Ah, but the idea is the same, ah, greed. Ah. So imagine Fatima ah, cry and cry. Ah, right? No more eggs or golden eggs already. So you see, it's a very, very simple story, uh, but the Dhamma teaching is very, very good. And today we have so many people who are so greedy, covetous, want other people's money. So they tell lies, they cheat, they cause suffering. I mean, you read the papers, you have even big shots, politicians, professional people, uh, cheating others, bluffing to get the money. That's why you have the scams, you know. You have to be careful also. Don't let people cheat you. So some, uh, you know, cheated by this con man. Uh, wow, we we'll go to the bank and transfer the money to all these con men, you know. Then later on, they realize they were cheated. Uh, this, see, is basically greed on the part of the evil people. And these people, they think that, wow, they can become rich uh, in the wrong way, uh. It's not that you cannot become rich. If you earn your money, honestly, and so on, success in your business, very, very clean, moral life, and it's fine. And then you can do more than ah, you earn the money. But a lot of people now, out of greed, uh, wanting the money fast and easy, uh, do terrible things. It's cheating, deceiving, telling lies. And some even uh, resort to killing, uh, isn't it? Uh, kidnap, uh, people really ask for ransom. And if the family members don't give the money, they kill off the victims. Huh? As you know very well. Isn't it? So many crimes are huh, born out of greed, actually. So now let us go on to slide. Huh? That's the last slide already. Huh? Slide number 14. Uh, I want you to reflect very clearly. Huh? 
Uh, the story is just an Aesop's fable. A fable is a legend, not a true story. But the messages given in Aesop's fables are very, very good, many of them. Remember the lion and the mouse? Right? Then you have so many others. Uh, the tortoise and the hare. Uh, the boy who cried wolves. So, uh. so, so many stories you have heard. Must always remember the messages, the moral lessons. Uh. Not just remember the story. You, know. you must remember the messages so that in your life, you can live wisely, righteously. Righteously means to follow moral principles. And then uh, your life will be more happy and peaceful. You can sleep very well without a, a guilty conscience. You have done something bad. You see? So that is the important thing about the moral lessons from stories. Now let us go on to slide number 14 now. That's the last slide. Oh, you can see the last slide. Now you see there's a background picture. I've uh, made it uh, very, very pale. Huh? Or you can see blur it up already. Uh. They call it a wash out. Lah, so that you know, uh, you will not disturb the words. Uh. The words are the most important. Uh. But anyway, there is a background there. Now the moral lessons to learn. Pengajaran moral untuk dipelajari. And you can say also the Dharma teachings. Uh. There is good Dharma actually. And the first of the two we are going to discuss is do not be greedy. Greed will lead one to Dukkha or suffering will lead a person uh, to Dukkha. Dukkha means suffering, problems, pain, grief, misery, sorrow. So many words are used to describe this Dukkha. And Dukkha is a Pali word. And Malay also has incorporated it into the language Dukkachita and then also Sukachita. All these are come from the Pali language or Sanskrit also. So, and uh, as I said just now, greed is one of the terrible three mental poisons that cause suffering and cause us to suffer and cause us to be reborn again and again in the cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, the cycle of samsara, samsaric, cyclic existence with the suffering. So, you must be careful. And all will start with the mind. If the mind is overcome by this mara, mara is, is not really the physical devil, it's the evil force, right? that comes out from the mind, the greed. You want to have something and you go about doing the wrong thing, you know, cheating, lying, deceiving, and so on. So that's the first important thing you have to realize. Do not be greedy. And associated with greed, you have covetousness, right? unwholesome desires, wanting these things, uh, and then after that, uh, you find uh, uh, other bad things will follow. Uh, lying, uh, cheating, uh, stealing even. Uh, some people are so greedy. Uh, they go and steal. Climb over the fence to the neighbor's house to pluck people's mangoes. <laughs> or so greedy uh, in the supermarket thinking that nobody is watching uh, to shoplift, uh, uh, to steal actually. Right? Put the things into the bag and then later on caught uh, uh, at it. Uh. So you see the, the second precept, uh, that means uh, do not steal or do not take what is what is not given. Uh, you should not take anything that's not given to you, isn't it? Stealing, of course, is one obvious thing. And you find this is born out of uh, greed, uh, usually. Right? Greedy. You know? And because of that, doing an unwholesome action. And you break the precept of stealing or taking what is not given to you then you will have to face the consequence. The results of Vipaka will be not good. And these results, as I gave you the example earlier, can happen in this life itself. If not, then next life. That's why, you know, some people ask, why some are born so very, very poor, 
some are born so very, very rich. Now, in the Buddha's teaching, uh, it's explained that people who are not greedy, who are generous, doing charity, opposite of greed, generosity, helping, donating, do charitable act, service, serve other people, and so on. All these opposite of greed, uh, uh, very caring uh, for other people. Uh. And these people uh, can be reborn into rich families. That's why you see. On the other hand, you find some who are really born into wretched, poor states. Uh, and in the Majjhima Nikaya, in the scriptures stated that uh, people who don't do any dana at all, they are always greedy and some even worse, uh, stealing, uh, uh, taking things not given and so on. They can be born into terrible poverty, uh, poor conditions, uh, can't even get food to eat, let alone uh, having money to, uh, like you are so fortunate uh, uh, to spend and go to Kentucky, McDonald's, and to even have a mobile phone. No, there are people you see uh, in so many parts of the world, they don't even have food to eat, not enough food. So remember this very important Dharma teaching of do not be greedy. Uh, now, just now I said already, uh, that mind is the forerunner of all things. The things start off with the mind. You have the evil thought uh, of wanting desiring of being greedy and then you find this greedy mind will lead you to do the evil things or what we call the unwholesome things bad things actually you see once you have greed in the mind then it will lead to other unwholesome things of the speech as well as of the body it starts off with the mind you see if the mind is full of kindness, love, compassion, right? And uh, all the good things. Uh, so you will not do the bad things, isn't it? So you start off with the mental department, Amara, force of greed. Then what happens? The speech can come in. You want to lie, you know, not to deceive. Right? Like a person uh, doing business is full of greed. Uh, so what happens? He lies, he tells the person, oh, you know, you get this, you get that, this is very good thing, and so on, but it's all lying. So you are breaking the precept. You are lying, you see. So you can see uh, the speech is affected. And some people, you see, uh, uh, they have evil intention of going to cheat and so on. Uh. So they uh, use all those lies uh, to buy the art of the other person. Uh. Uh, con people, uh, con men, uh, Scammers, all they use all this. Uh, oh, the speech are so good actually, but actually all a pack of lies out to cheat because they are greedy. They want more and more and more money. Uh, so, and then of course the action, you know very well. A person uh, motivated uh, or, you know, really overcome by the force of greed who well, decides to kidnap that small child, you know. Why? Because he... He, he wants no money la, to kidnap the child from the millionaire and then after that ransom la, upon the family. You know, if you don't give so much, so much money, how many hundred thousand or two hundred thousand by a certain time, what way your child will be killed. And they have all the terrible ways, you know, uh, make the child cry and then uh, maybe take a video shot uh, and then show it uh, uh, to the family uh, through the mobile phone. Many, many ways uh, because they are deceitful always cheating. So a greedy mind leads to evil or unwholesome action of the speech as well as the body. And this will have painful consequences. So some people say, no, no you see, there's some people who think, you know, yeah, you see this fella, huh? very greedy and uh, he has been cheating, he smuggles drugs and then uh, he does a lot of sums, yeah, yeah everything. Huh? But yet yeah, nothing like, yeah, but you're only seeing one small part of the life. What is going to happen in the when the fellow gets older? Do you know? Would he be struck by cancer or an accident or something terrible? You don't know. You are just seeing one part of the life. And even if nothing really happens until he dies, we know that that does not end all things. He will be reborn again. Isn't it? Ah. So you hear stories of... Uh, Hungry ghosts, <laughs> hungry ghosts are coming uh, back, uh, right? And they have no food to eat. 
no clothes to wear, all the suffering states. Uh. So which means that you have states which have a lot of suffering. And if you get reborn into such states like uh, animal state is also terrible suffering, right? Or you get reborn into the ghost ring or even hell, then it's terrible. So it does not pay at all to do the unwholesome things. Uh, and this is just one of the departments, the first one. In Pali, we call it loba, greed. So be careful. A greedy mind leads to evil or unwholesome action. And this will have painful consequences. I think you examine in the world, you see why people are suffering so much as some are. Oh, you, you know, so poor, uh, you can't even get the basic things of food, clothing, shelter. Is it God that made them like that? And every time they do things, not successful as well. So sometimes it can be traced to a previous karma. In the previous life, so, have you, have, has a person been so very greedy and then because of that, cheating, stealing, and even killing and so on to give the consequence, the vipaka, we call it. So this is a very important thing for you to note so that you from young will learn important moral lessons. And a very important three mental poisons are this. Loba, dosa, moha. Loba, the translation usually is put as greed. And that's what the story is about here. In this particular second Aesop's fable about the greed. And the second one is actually dosa, which pertains to anger, hatred, feelings of revenge, cruel thoughts. Now, this one also, some other stories have been told that show the danger of the second poison, which is dosa, which is hate or anger. And the third one is delusion, moha. Wrong view, wrong thinking, wrong attitude, ego, very high. And all these also uh, will bring in lots of dukkha. So these are the three. But anyway, I'm not doing uh, the other two. Lah. Another time, maybe we pick a story that shows the departments, the danger of the departments of dosa, or even moha. Today, we concentrate on this one. The first one, of course, is about being kind. Uh, what goes around comes around. Good begets good. That was the first story. This one is about the greed. So we have come to the end of this presentation. It's coming to almost uh, one hour already uh, with all the explanation. Uh. So before we say sadhu three times, so I would like to take this opportunity to thank all you boys and girls, students of uh, Buddhist Sunday School and Dharma classes, teachers of Buddhist Sunday School Dharma classes, and the parents and grandparents who are teaching the younger generation important moral lessons, important Dharma. Lah. So to all of you who have been following this presentation, I would like to say thank you and sadhu to all of you for taking the time and putting in the energy and the effort uh, and also to concentrate and listen uh, uh, those require effort. Uh. So you have done good things uh, by following this. So I say sadhu and thank you to you. So now we will conclude by saying sadhu three times. So we just uh, uh, put our palms together and say sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh, to all of you who have been following this presentation, once again, I say thank you. And may you all be well, happy, peaceful. And may you follow uh, the Dharma very, very diligently and conscientiously. Uh, follow the moral precepts. Right. Sadhu, take care.